guys, Sap here with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and we have just got off the back of the episode 9 of Call of the Arbiter. We're almost at the end of the first series, which I guess is the first of hopefully future ones, because they have been quite good, even if they've been a bit too short and a bit disconnected. Now, spoilers, if you haven't watched Call of the Arbiter, skip this bit. In that episode, we learn about the backstory of Bad El Kazar, our favorite solo champion. Turns out Bad El Kazar used to be known as Valkanen. This dude here, which I guess this is like more developed Valkanen before he becomes Bad El Kazar and a bit more developed than in the TV episode. Uh, but we can see he's got like a little death book. He's like, you know, conflicted by Siroth. We can see all his champion lore here as well, which is kind of cool. But the thing I want to talk about in this video is... Is Valkanen an actual viable damage dealer? He is going to be one of the most unique champions in the game because of the way that he uses his abilities. So let's just do a quick ability breakdown here. He's got an A1, attacks one enemy. This attack ignores all shields. It has a 60% chance, which gets booked to 80% of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn, which on an A1 is bonkers good you think vizier does it 30 percent on three hits when it's booked he's doing 80 percent on one hit so he's probably like the highest a1 sort of increased duration that you can get for this job also has a 80 percent which obviously books to 100 percent of spreading debuffs taking two random debuffs from the target and place them on all enemies under hex this is akimtum giga charged Okay, this is what Akimtum does on his A1, but it's not 100%. He's going to do it 100% on every single A1. Immediately, I'm thinking this is the, the, the future of Akimtum, right? It's the new Akimtum. So that's a really, really strong ability there. That's probably the best debuff spread in the game and one of the best debuff extenders in the game and probably a bit of damage. Then we've got Hexablades, attacks all enemies. This attack deals single target damage to each enemy, each target individually rather than AoE damage which is quite peculiar. I mean, it gets around things like Duchess passive and a couple of other things, uh, but I don't really think that's like kind of that crazy, but essentially it means he's going to random attack everyone. That's how they've coded it. It's randomly attack all enemies. So you get around like the AOE targeting. It does mean you will bypass things like Blast Proof or Swift uh, Resolve, whatever it's called, the Masteries that reduce damage on AOE damage. And anything like Hydra, for example, this bypasses the Hydra passive, which is actually quite significant because this ability and the A1 really feels like it's very strong for Hydra. Before attacking, has an 80% chance of placing the Hex debuff on all enemies for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. Will ignore 20% of each enemy's resistance for each dead ally. More of that in a second. Damage of this skill increases by 10% for each debuff on each enemy. Now, the way that I read this is you get the target has 10 debuffs, then I increase the damage on that target by 10. It's not going to share that multiplier across all enemies. It's going to be targeted basis. So you can only have a maximum of 100% more damage on each individual target. But in a Hydra setting, you get a three turn hex, which has a chance of placing, uh, which has also a chance of increasing the damage if you have lots of debuffs and you won't get sort of penalized for being an aoe attack like you normally would with other aoe damage dealers so far he in my opinion he's like you know top tier for hydra very very strong okay you don't get a lot of effects but he works well with other champions like lydia could use you could use that lydia block buffs alongside all her supported buffs to basically spread block buffs with this a1 because you're gonna have hex out all the time and you're gonna have a very very strong likelihood that you're gonna spread it. it's 100 chance to spread two random debuffs so you know he's void there won't be any affinity issues it's very it's, it's a little bit easier to activate than akimtum who is not 100 he has a few issues with poisons and a bunch of other different things you don't have to worry about that you're going to get strong damage so already great hydro champion now this is where it gets funky this is where it gets a bit weird target an ally if the ally is alive kills them oops unlocks a secret skill malice unleashed also places a weaken and true fear for all uh, on all enemies this debuff cannot be resisted or blocked then fills the champion's turn by 75 percent if the ally is dead heals this champion instead um, if all allies are dead, unlocks the secret skill Malice Unleashed. So if everyone's dead and he's solo, he'll get the secret. If he kills someone, he gets the secret. If you target a dead ally, you don't get the secret. That's the key thing to note. 
So you need to make a decision. If you want to target a dead ally to heal yourself, you won't get access to his Malice Unleashed. Places a shield buff on this champion for two turns. The value of the shield is equal to any surplus healing. If this champion already has a shield buff and the, the value of that shield is increased, then fills this champion by 75% turn meters. So we basically, it's kind of like almost an extra turn. To be honest, I prefer this to be a guaranteed extra turn. It's a void legendary champion. You know, I want it to go kill the enemy, then I can do something because essentially you, you have to wait, uh, like you have to wait for your turn again. That's the downside, right? You kill someone, great, you've lost an ally. Now you have to wait for your turn. Now what I would say, which is a very clever thing you can do here, and I think this is some way you can make him work even more. I think he's very much a Hydra champion. If your counter is about to get consumed, if one of your allies is about to be consumed, you can kill them and remove the counter and then unlock his secret skill and then revive him. It's very clever. I think it's a very smart thing you can do. You can almost stop the Devour from happening quite a lot of times because you'll always have this available. So every time the Devour counter is coming close... You just kill them, reset the Devour counter. The next one's coming around. Oh, it's getting close. Kill them, reset the Devour counter. I mean, can you actually run this where you never get devoured? It seems likely. It's a three-turn cooldown. So as long as you get back around to it pretty quickly, I can't see why you can't. What is it all about? Malice Unleashed. Attacks one enemy. Before attacking, it steals all the best from the target. It cannot be resisted. If this target has attack equal to or higher than this champion's attack, this attack gains bonus damage multiplier equal to the target's attack. It's not applicable to bosses, right? Otherwise, it would be bonkers, right? You're saying you're going to get, like, the, the Shogun boss that's 35,000 attack. It would make his damage, uh, like, overwhelmingly astronomical. So they've done that to stop that from happening. If the target's attack is less than this champion's attack, this, this attack will ignore 50% of the target's defense. It also ignores block damage, unkillable, shield, ally protection, but not stone skin. He will block revive anyone he does this with. If you kill them, he block revives. So it's kind of insane. Basically means like, you know, it's kind of like a jaw gate on steroids, but he won't ignore that stone skin, right? So you've got to keep that in mind. You've got to get past the ultimate death knight if you're using him in arena. We also have this passive, which kind of ruins his arena potential. What I will just say first before we go on the passive, this ability right now, we're going to look at it in the math, I think is bugged. I think there's an error in the multiplier. I'm going to explain why I think there's an error and how it works. I'm going to feed it back to player into the bug reports. I'm making this video so I can actually break down the champion, but I also wanted to have video evidence to kind of explain my logic as to why it is bugged. Currently, it will do more damage than it's meant to. So I will talk about that in a second. Now, the reason why I actually think this guy is a Hydra champion, but not an arena champion, is this Phantom Bulwark ability. He's going to place a shield on himself each time an ally or enemy champion dies. The value of the shield is equal to 50%. This shield buff cannot be removed, stolen, or transferred. So he's going to get a shield. If the champ champion is under a shield, he's going to increase his shield, right? He's always going to shield. It doesn't really say how long the shield is for. So it seems to be a two-turn duration shield. So if an ally dies or you kill an enemy, you get a two-turn shield, which is protected on a one-turn cooldown. So pretty much, you're always going to be under shield, probably, as long as you're running this correctly. Whenever an enemy... This is where I think the problem comes in. Whenever an enemy hits this champion while they're under a shield buff, places a random debuff on the target uh, of the attacking enemy. Fear, True Fear, Freeze, Sleep, Petrification, and Stun debuffs are placed for one turn. Any other debuffs are placed for two turns. We'll ignore 20% of the enemy's resistance for each dead ally, but he cannot place boss explosive debuffs, sheep, or smite debuffs, right? So we've got a list here. They've had to create a show button. These are all the debuffs. So you can place bombs, block passive skills. That's kind of big. But, you know, you, you've got to roll the dice. You can't really rely on any of these debuffs because... You know, apart from the immunity ones here, like he could, I would imagine he'll be able to roll stun on the boss and it'll just say debuff blocked, right? So you can't even guarantee that it'll only use the debuffs that the, the target can actually have. You have so many debuffs here, you can't really count on him as a debuffer. But what he will do is he will place debuffs every time he gets attacked. So you're just asking for him to get sheeped. This guy is like polymorph awfulness. Like it's, if you actually created a skill that was designed to be the worst skill to play into polymorph this would be it every time you attack me i have a chance of placing some pointless debuff that i don't really want to place but that's going to mean that you will actually sheep me and then he becomes useless so i don't think he's an arena nuker because of this ability i think 
You know, if you want to use him in goal five, well, you can just use a much easier, reliable and consistent damage dealer. Someone like, you know, a Supreme Alhain that we've all just got a couple of months back at the start of Call of the Arbiter or at the end of the Titan event, whenever it was. Uh, you can use a Gembo. You can use any of your starting nukes. I mean, I've even used an Uncommon Champion to kill people in gold five. Um, classic arena in live arena that's you know you've got candrophons he's not going to displace like the leorias the tarases the 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 jorgids the rotuses they're just too strong and this ability is going to disqualify him so i don't really see him as an arena nuka but as a pve monster hydra wise absolutely insane outside of hydra if you don't want to kill your allies you can just turn this off and make him a hexer with the ability to spread debuffs right just constantly go through it you can be a great wave clear champion in doom tower climbing you don't always have to kill your ally you can disable this if you want but i definitely think this ability to like kill your ally reset that devour counter is absolutely crazy as long as you can keep bringing them back you should never ever ever get devoured now let's break down his multipliers so we have already got the champion guide live on the website now this may may change over time the ratings at the moment are probably a little bit ropey uh just because we're trying to figure out the best way to use him uh, i definitely think we're probably underrate him a little bit in hydra maybe we can push him up into different areas as well obviously he's a void legendary he's only just come out we haven't had a chance to truly test him yet but just in uh looking at this quickly we can see we've got the different things we've got his arena roll breakdown uh we've got a really big bio because actually trying to explain how it works is quite difficult but the thing to point out here is his skills. So his A1 multiplier is going to be a 3.6 times attack. We've got the rating as godlike, but I think we're probably going to be having to do a bit of a, a pass on all of our ratings soon because, you know, we haven't really adjusted the boundaries in about 6 to 12 months. It's likely that certain champions have come in and have pushed people out of the boundary. So we'll probably be doing a bit of a review of the grading system in the coming weeks. But at the moment, it's rated as godlike, which means it's the top 15% of all damage dealers in the game. Uh, on the A2, it's a 4.2 times attack. And then for every additional debuff, it's 4.2 times attack times 0.1 times the debuff count. We're going to double check and reverse engineer the math to make sure that we're actually getting 10% bonus damage. But it should result that 10 debuffs equals 100% more damage on that ability. That is rated as godlike because we put it through as if there is three debuffs on the target on normal situations because that normally means like a decreased defense a weak gun maybe there's a decreased attack or poison or something else so we just consider three debuffs is a good marker we can look as well to see how hard it's going to hit on a clan boss setting aka scenarios where you would get 10 debuffs that would apply for hydra as well then we've got this death's bargain that's obviously no multiplier and malice unleashed and i'll tell you now that this multiplier is the most complicated multiplier i've looked at apart from seer so the way that it works if you attack a boss, you deal 7.5 times attack. That's the multiplier. 7.5 times attack. If you are attacking champions and that champion has got an attack value that is greater than yours, then you add their attack to your attack, then multiply it by 7.5. That's the way that it works. Now, here is where it is bugged. Currently, it looks like if you're attacking champions, you get their attack included in your attack multiplier, irrespective of the condition irrespective most of the time you are going to be wanting to attack people with less attack than you most of the time but if you are not then obviously you get a massive bonus damage because essentially you get your attack plus their attack times 7.5 so it is going to be a massively big hit it's one of the biggest hits in the game but it is currently bugged we're going to have a look at that math on a spreadsheet in a second so if you head over to hellhades.com you can see all the multipliers all the skills all the different effects over there now let's get to the xl part so what we want to do first is just verify that the attack um the the a2 is getting the bonus multiplier. So I've plugged it in here. I basically got the damage numbers here. You can see this is cool. We can drag that across to make sure it matches. So we've basically got, if we have like 6,000 attack, then, you know, a raw number without any crit damage or any bonus multipliers is 37,800. Uh, 37, and then you can see every time we add one debuff using the multiplier, we're getting 10%. So yes, the A2 is coded perfectly. We get 100% more damage. Um, if we have 10 debuffs but the a3 is wrong right so this is the formula the multiplier for the a3 right now you have three conditions in one formula and the the sort of conditions point here basically qualifies in or qualifies out so for example if the target is not a boss then you are times in by zero which means you get zero for this part there's three parts here 
if the target attack is greater than your attack and the target is not a boss then obviously if the the the, the resulting condition is false it returns zero so it qualifies it out so the way that we can work this out here is i've got two little check markers here i'm going to say a target has got uh, let's see, 10,000 attack, and they're not under an attack buff. So I'm going to put my attack here at 499, which basically means even if I have an attack buff, I will be less than the target's attack, okay? So the target has greater attack, yes, but I'm not attacking a boss. So when we pass it through the multiplier here, we go, is the target a boss? No, so that's zero. Is, does the target have a, an attack that is greater than or equals to my attack? Yes, okay, so this passes the first condition. Is the target a boss? No, okay, so the, the, the exclamation mark here basically says target is not a boss. It's the opposite of target is a boss. So that's passed. So we're basically going one times, one times 7.5, times attack plus target attack which is correct because the condition is if the target has more attack then i take their attack along with my attack right that's the way it works but i don't ignore any defense now the third condition would be if the target attack is less than my attack now in this condition say like i pushed myself to 7000 attack that would basically give me around about 14,000 when I was when when you buff with increased attack, right? Because you get 1.5, right? So 7,000 times 1.5, we'd be at 10,500, not 14,000. Math in my head is a bit difficult right now. So that means we would be more than 10,000 attack, which means that we would not have a situation where the target has greater attack. So if we set this to no, you can see the formula moves to the third condition. But the problem is regardless of whether we have greater than or less than attack we're still including the attack plus target attack this is probably what i would like to call a copy and paste issue we've copied both we swapped the condition we forgot to take away the target attack irrespective of whether the target has greater or less than attack you steal the target's attack always which actually means he's going to do insane amounts more damage than he's meant to because he's not meant to ignore 50 percent defense and take the target's attack because that's what this is going to do right now. It's going to take your attack. It's going to take the target's attack. So you'll basically get, what is it, 10,500 plus 10,000 if the target had 10,000 attack. Say like the target had um, sort of 6,500 and it multiplied by 1.5 if you were attacking an attack-based champion. You would take 20,500 and multiply it with 7.5. That would be your multiplier. You'd be feeding an absolute bonkers amount of damage because then you would pass that through a defense and you would ignore 50 percent defense on top of that which is why it's probably a bug this is the segment where i go playroom did an oopsie they need to correct this probably to actually make it so that it should be this that's what it should be it shouldn't have the additional targeted attack on top more to clean it up to get rid of the parentheses it should be that but they forgot to take the target attack out for the second condition so what it means is valkanen right now irrespective of the enemy's attack is going to take the enemy's attack and include it in his multiplier but irrespective of whether they fix that or not it's still a very big hitting ability when we have a little look at my index here when we look at how champions compare with each other we're using a bit of power bi here as a great bit of tool we can see that valkanen's a1 kind of sits at the same level of sort of jetney war mother or boro he's not really in the crazy kind of tier of a1s right he's sitting just in this position here if we were to really sort of ramp that up and kind of see where we'd be we'd be at around about like Candrophon's A1 is at 76,000, Quintus is at 70,000. You know, you've got these champions up here. Weragrin Suncurse A1 is really high because he has that passive 30% bonus. So he's kind of like compared to Candrophon, which is 70,000. It's not really like the actual damage they deal. It's my, my way of indexing champion damage. He's down at 30,000, which makes him about half the strength of a Candrophon A1. It's still pretty good damage. It's just nothing like outstanding, right? He's sitting amongst like epics and... You know, we've got like Gembo's just up here a little bit. We've got Basilius Ruanas, Nobel, you know, the Ninja Fusion. So that's where his A1 set. So in terms of his A2, we put it up against sort of an arena AOE level of 4,000 defense. Um, that's obviously a big factor. He kind of sits in this kind of like Supreme Kale, Abess, War Mother, Alexander frame of damage. Quintus is down here at sort of A3. Obviously, it's not factoring in Quintus's passive, which does bonus damage. It's not enough really to make him like 
a massive damage dealer here. You know, we're not talking like, you know, Taras is at 66,000 as an example. You know, we got we got Jorgen up here at 40,000, Baron's at 35,000. Um, there's some a few errors here with our attack. You can ignore those. Um, I've been messing around with different multipliers. But the key thing to remember here is like these these damage dealers like Constantine is 26,000, Errol's at 25. He's all the way down in like the 17,000. I always frame it against where does he come up against um, the ethos. And he's basically below ethos tier. So if ethos can't do the job for you, he's not going to do the job for you on that A2. Which is why I don't think he's very much a PvP nuker at all um, for this AoE ability. I think he's very much a hex champion for Hydra if you're going to use him. But in terms of his big hitter, where does his big hitter come into it? Let's have a look. You can tell which one Valkanen is because his multiplier just makes it huge but we can see Jintora obviously we know is one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game because of that five hitter we've got Litmus Annie as well Tumasia hits really hard because of the multiplier Taras the Fierce on his A2s his A3 it's kind of bonkers we know Taras needs a nerf Elder Skarg with his six hitter you're seeing all the big like multi-hitter crazy ones very highly conditional champions at all 100% ignore defense then we get Valkanen. Now, you might be wondering why the hell is Fenchy so high? Remember, Fenchy ignores defense for every poison. So we're assuming that he's got some ignore defense components here. Also has a very high multiplier. So keep that in mind that that's why Fenchy is up this high. But he is at 70,892 at the moment. So the way that I have estimated this damage after all the different bugs is I'm going to assume that nine times out of 10, you're going to be attacking a target like a boss or a champion. And you're going to be hitting 7.5 times attack and you're going to be ignoring 50% defense. So what I've just done quickly is I've adjusted my formula to assume that there isn't an ignore defense, and I've added in bonus attack plus one. So whatever is estimated build here, which is normally is base attack frames, is like a formula I pass it through. I've added the same quantity, but I've added plus one to assume that even if it's one, what's the worst case scenario, right? So what's the best damage on the worst case scenario, as in the target only has one extra above yours. So let's have a look here. Currently at 70,892. That's if the target is 7.5 times attack with 50% ignore defense, not the bonus attack. What is it going to be? Where does it put him? 77,472. So that basically means that if the enemy has a little bit more attack than you, then you will do more damage than the ignore defense. But that is based on a sort of 2,500 defense marker. If we look at it, if it's on a, an arena defense marker, he goes down to sort of like 50,000, was it? 52,579. Let's revert the formula now and let's see if it looks any better. So we've moved from 52,000 to 60,582. So what it basically means is a high defense target you're going to gain benefit. It's a very well-balanced skill. It doesn't feel like it's going to be like crazy either way. But if the target has a lot of attack, not a lot of defense, then you're going to want to make sure your Balkan and has like just a little bit lower. That's the ideal situation, just a little bit lower than him. But if it's a high defense target, actually you want to have as much attack as possible because you're probably going to value that ignore defense. This is assuming that you're going to have an extra 30% from Savage and Cruel. All of the damage numbers here assume that you're in Savage Cruel for just the, the, the sort of accuracy of any champions like Falcon and that has a ignore defense within this skill because it is not linear. Ignore defense is not a linear process like weaken. If I put 25% more damage on all of these, they'll all be in the same order, just 25% more numbers. Whereas ignore defense is a bit different because it depends on how much you ignore and what combination. So does it make him a really strong nuker? On that A3, yes, it's quite powerful, but you have to kill an ally to actually enable that. And in an arena setting where you only have four allies, you don't really want to be having to sacrifice an ally to unlock a single target nuke, which isn't going to really kill the enemy team. If it was an AoE nuke, we'd be talking slightly different. I don't think this guy is the next arena nuker at all, but I think he's absolutely strong for Hydra. I think he's going to be one of the best champions for Hydra in the game because of the way that his kit is set up. I think you can abuse his mechanics to avoid that devour counter, which is really cool. I also think instead of debuff scenarios where you need to keep the debuff going, he probably hits quite hard in clan boss just because of his raw damage. Although you can't really afford to sacrifice anyone in clan boss, so you'd have to turn off that A3 and then he just becomes a debuff extender. But if you want to run like that Vizier style comp and you don't have Vizier, then Valkanen can do the job for you. You don't need the A2. You just make him an A1 bot doing damage. It's a bit of a reduction of a champion. But hey, you will get bonus like passive debuffs as well. But you just got to be careful that doesn't cause problems. Don't really think clan boss is like crazy for him. But I do think like in Hydra is really good. Dragon hard where you want to extend those poisons as long, uh, as long as you can. If you're running like a reflect or a deflection or something of that nature. 
very good idea because you get a good amount of extension. Champions in like Irogoth, where you've got multiple allies or enemies, same thing as um, sort of Spider, if you want to spread those HP burns, it's going to spread the HP burn 100% of the time on an A1 ability. It's very, very good for that. But as a PvP nuker, I'm automatically going to say his passive and the utility of the way you have to set up his kit is just not going to work in, a, in an, an, an arena meta where you can't debuff and you don't really have the luxury of losing a champion and think you're going to win, right? You've got to sacrifice one of your champions to make him do damage. It's just not quite there. But certainly in Hydra, I think he's like absolutely bonkers. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching that video. It's a bit of a long one. Uh, the key thing to take away is his A4 is currently bugged and I will report it to player him so that they can take a look and probably fix it before people start pulling for him. Um, but we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.